In this video, we will be covering how to use nSolid to generate a heap snapshot from your Node.js application. We will also walk through the basics of examining the data presented in the nSolid console. So what is a heap snapshot? A heap snapshot is a way to capture the contents of the V8 heap. This information can be helpful when troubleshooting memory leaks in your application. nSolid allows you to take heap snapshots in production without requiring external packages and instrumentation of your code. This enables you to quickly detect memory leaks while under a production load without spending additional effort in attempting to reproduce the leak in a dev or test environment. nSolid provides two ways to generate a heap snapshot. The first way is by using thresholds. The second way is to manually initiate one via the nSolid console. Thresholds allow us to configure nSolid to automatically capture a CPU profile or heap snapshot based on the resource usage of a process. When the configured threshold is exceeded for the specified duration, nSolid will start capturing the heap snapshot and save it for us to examine later. To enable a threshold for this application, we click on the Threshold Settings link in the upper right corner. We can enable thresholds based on heap or CPU usage. We can choose the value where the threshold is triggered, as well as how long that process should be above that value to trigger the threshold and how long should we back off for before the threshold is triggered again. Now let's walk through manually generating a heap snapshot. Using the nSolid console, we can see each of the instances of our application running nSolid. We notice that one of the processes is using more memory than the others. We can expand the screen to see the details of the process. Here, not only can we create a new heap snapshot, but also see the previously generated ones. To start a new heap snapshot, we click the new snapshot link. It's important to note that generating a heap snapshot does freeze the process while the memory is being captured. This is often just for a very short time, but it may be noticeable to consumers of your application. After the snapshot has completed, nSolid will analyze the results and build a detailed view of the contents of the snapshot, allowing us to inspect it directly in the nSolid console. Let's walk through what information it provides. The snapshot view groups objects in memory by type. We can see the number of objects of that type, as well as the shallow size and the retained size of those objects. The shallow size of an object is the memory it is consuming itself. The retained size is the amount of memory that will be freed once this object has been deleted. This is important because it also includes the size of the child objects that are referenced by this one. A single heap snapshot generally isn't very helpful for troubleshooting memory issues. Instead, we want to be able to compare multiple snapshots to see what objects are being created and then persisting across garbage collection runs. nSolid solves the challenge of generating heap snapshots from production systems. We can then use another popular tool to analyze them. The Chrome Developer Tools, included in the Chrome Web Browser, provide an easy-to-use UI for examining multiple heap snapshots, giving us a way to track down memory leaks. nSolid saves memory snapshots in the same format that the Chrome Developer Tools can load. On the Heap Snapshot view, we have a Download Snapshot button, which lets us save this snapshot to our local computer. We can then generate another heap snapshot with the new snapshot button and download that one as well. Once we have three to five snapshots, we're ready to examine them in the Chrome Developer Tools. To open the Chrome Developer Tools, we can use F12 on Windows or Option Command I on a Mac. This brings up a new window with the available tools. Let's click on the Memory tab to start working with our snapshots. Normally, we can use this tab to record the memory usage of our web applications. Since we already have a set of our heap snapshots, we can click the Load button to import them. When loading our snapshots, we want to make sure that we're loading them from the oldest ones first so that we can correctly understand how memory is being used over time. Now that we have loaded our heap snapshots, we can examine what objects are impacting our memory usage. Before we go too deep into examining the objects in memory, it's important to understand the steps V8 does when generating a snapshot. Before the snapshot is created, the garbage collector is run to remove all objects that are no longer referenced. 
This ensures that only objects that are actively referenced will appear in the heap snapshots. This allows us to compare the snapshots to see which objects were created and persisted. The Chrome Developer Tools provide a few different views to make this easy. Let's start by selecting our third snapshot and checking what objects were allocated before the first snapshot. We can see a long list of objects, which isn't very helpful. If we change the view to only show objects allocated between the first and second snapshots, but still exist in the third snapshot, we start to see more helpful data. Notice that we have a name constructor, Dillinger per URL stats, which had 500 instances created between these two snapshots. Let's also take a look at the objects allocated between the second and third snapshots. Notice that we see 500 more instances of the Dillinger per URL stats object have been created. We can also use the comparison view to see the change in memory between two specific snapshots. This view can also help pinpoint which objects are being created and held onto inside of our application. Let's take a closer look at the details of the Dillinger per URL stats object. We can expand the object to see the list of instances of each object in memory. When we select an instance, we can use the retainers panel below to examine what objects had a reference to the one we selected. In our example here, there is a name, there's an array named stat data, which is part of the Dillinger Global Stats class. This gives us a starting point to our code to examine why we're creating so many of these objects and why they're not being freed. In real applications, finding memory leaks often isn't as easy as the one we saw today. Like many debugging skills, troubleshooting a memory leak takes practice to get good at. Not all leaks will be as obvious as adding a new object to a global array on each request, like what we had here. NSolid provides you with the ability to capture huge snapshots while your application is running in production. For most companies, just getting this data is the biggest challenge when they experience a memory leak in their Node.js applications. In addition, NodeSource offers professional services around performance training and consulting if you are looking for additional help with memory leaks in your applications. That concludes this video. You can learn more about NSolid by going to our website at nodesource.com. Thank you for watching.